I think most people are aware that Give Energy do home battery systems, especially if you're on this channel. But are you aware that we also do commercial battery systems? We're talking megawatt hours, thousands of kilowatt hours for a single install. So this is why I'm here at our commercial manufacturing facility to find out more about, well, how big do they go? What's the inverter like? Is it essentially like my home battery, but much bigger? Or is there more to it than that? This is Darren. He's the commercial director at Give Energy and he's going to tell us all about these systems. Uh, now, I know from what you've told me already, this is a 600 kilowatt hour That's right. battery with a 250 kilowatt inverter, relatively a baby for what's possible. So could you start with what I'm interested in the most? How big do these theoretically go? So th there's no actual limit to the size on these systems. We can do any size you want, okay? Any so, size? Wow. Yeah, any size. So what you'll see behind me is three sections and each of them are 200 kilowatt hours. So yeah, so that's the section there and that, right, I see, yeah. Yeah, okay. So 200 kilowatt hours per section. Got you. you generally have about uh, two up to eight sections per inverter. So that gets you up to about 1.4 megawatt hour per segment. Right. Okay. That will go with anything between a 30 and a 500 kilowatt inverter. Right. If wow. you want more, you then have multiples of that. And the largest one we have out in the field at the minute is 4,800 kilowatt hours. And that is 4.8 megawatt hours in an easier terminology. So to put that into context, I have a fairly decent sized home battery that's 19 kilowatt hours yep. and we've put in a 4,800 kilowatt hours battery. Correct, yeah. And just wow. to put that into real terms, that's about 600 days of your average home usage. Who is using that then? And not necessarily that specifically, but who, who would benefit from a 4.8 megawatt hour battery? So it can be anybody really from what you'd class as a large residential pro property all the way through to your farms, your hotels, council buildings, uh, and then we go even bigger into things like hospitals, factories, distribution centers. So anything commercial, essentially? Anywhere where you use power, a battery can help. Right, and in terms of that 4.8 specifically, can you tell us what yeah, that's so for that's you? one of the NHS projects over in Belfast. So Right, so it's a hospital? A, it's a hospital, yes. Oh. So that particular project, along with a, a couple of 2.4 megawatt hours and a slightly smaller 600, same size as this, mm. are there to provide resilience to the hospital. Does that mean so, in the event of a power cut? Yeah, number one purpose is to keep the power on. And what's important, what this does over your standard UPS, you'll have heard of UPS as probably. Uninterruptible power supply. Correct. Yeah. Um, what this will do is this will back up the whole hospital. Right. So everything's backed up by this one battery it's then got some supplementary diesel generators for if the grid's off for a longer period okay. so that they can stay stable. The important thing of the site-wide backup, you don't lose your lifts, you don't lose your lighting, your sockets mm. and everything like that. So no one will notice all, pretty much from a, from a patient point of view? From a patient point of view, you shouldn't know the power's gone off. Right, and logically it shouldn't go off for any length of time for it to actually shut a hospital down, I guess. No, so, so we... That's we, the diesel generator that you mentioned. Exactly, yeah. So yeah. we back up somewhere between a few minutes to maybe 15, 20 minutes, right. and then the generators kick in and right. take over. And that's to allow for multiple power cuts a day. I charge my batteries at night because it's cheaper for me to do that and then that powers house through the day. Does that exist in commercial world? Absolutely, yes. Oh. So the tariffs are a little bit different. The, yeah. the, the, the difference between the day and the night tariff is not normally as good historically. Yeah. We are working with a few of the, the big energy suppliers to see if they can help us create a battery tariff mm. that's purpose is not just to save money, mm. but to balance the grid. Yeah. And that is to take power when there's lots of excess, when the wind's generating offshore. At night usually, yeah. Uh, and, yeah. And things like that. And then use, use the battery to discharge during the day to avoid pulling that power when the, the, the grid's dirtier. When the so grid's it can save money in much the same way that I do and other people with home batteries do? It can do exactly the same thing and, and some more. Solar as well? Yeah, absolutely. Solar, wind even hydro potentially. There's lots of purposes that you can use So effectively, for. it is almost like a home system, but for commercial, in terms of if you've got the same benefits. Yeah, exactly, yeah. The same benefits, plus some more functionality to allow it to do things that some of the industries need. So one example of that is peak shaving. 
Okay. okay. <laughs> so if you have a, 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 let's say a factory, for example, mm -hmm. your factory runs between nine and five on weekdays. Right. Okay. Yeah. You have a piece of equipment or several pieces of equipment that take a lot of power but for a relatively short period, might be on and off during the day. Okay. okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think of something like a furnace, a, a, a heating so it's a furnace. Big peak. Right. Big peak. Okay. You have to pay your electric supplier commercially to have that amount of power available. So whatever not you're, just what you take. Not just what you take. You pay for what right. you take, but you, you pay an availability allowance almost. Right. So if you need one megawatt of power at any one instant or 1,000 kilowatts, you will pay for 1,000 kilowatts of availability. Even if you only use it for five minutes? Even if your usage throughout the whole day only sums up to five minutes. So the battery can fill in the, do, do what you just said, the peak shave. The peak shave. And what that is, is you would set the battery to discharge at anything above X. So in that example, you might set the battery to discharge at anything above 500 kilowatts of import. Right. Then you pay your energy supplier for 500 kilowatts of availability not a thousand and there's all sorts of services you can apply for grid services where you can use the battery to support the grid with or without solar there's lots of details and i think there's probably a few too many to, <laughs> yeah, to go yeah, on about yeah. here so that hospital you mentioned they do it for resilience yep do they save money as well in in the time of day thing so peak shaving they do so that. northern ireland unfortunately has a quite an unstable grid system yep. So they, they try and uh, peak people. So they'll, they'll give you an import limit. That's the maximum you're allowed to right. take. And the hospital quite often gets up there. So the battery is set to discharge. When we get above a certain point, right. the battery kicks in and prevents the hospital going over. So it's overload. not just to uh, keep, keep the lights on for a hospital anyway. It can actually save the money and justify the expense. Exactly, yes. Ah. Yeah, exactly. And then the system can also take part in the grid services that you get paid for. So things like so fast frequency response, export, right. and things like that, yeah. So you can probably hear a big fan kicking in on the inverter. Yeah. What's that doing? So <laughs> that cooling is it down, cooling it? the inverter right. down, exactly. So the fan is dynamic. It's not on all the time. Uh, it will come on as and when required. Right. right. So when the internal temperature gets to, I think it's 50 degrees, it will kick in right and then when the t internal temperature gets back down to 30 it will shut off and, and carry on so we can carry on filming in about five minutes then exactly <laughs> now you can probably tell from the whine that you hear in the background that i'm next to an inverter um so what's tell that us about this so this is the 250 kilowatt inverter we've got running our site right. the whine you can hear is the system doing its job yeah. it's the igbts internally and all the other electronics making the electricity what we've done here is, is practice what we preach, okay? This site runs off-grid. Now that doesn't mean grid neutral, so a lot of what we do, I think you did a video about that recently. Yeah, yeah it is. If, if not, it will be coming soon, but essentially we're not, we, we actually disconnected. Physically turned off, yes. Wow. So actually physically disconnected. Powered by the sun. Powered by the sun. And that runs this whole site. So this isn't a huge site, no. but there are somewhere between uh, five and 15 people working from here each day. We've got a couple of car chargers as well. And there's lots of batteries getting charged. There's training going on All with sorts. batteries. So the, yeah. in terms of power, there's a decent amount of usage. There's so a decent usage, yeah. In terms of the inverter system, is this uh, one and then you can add to it as the smaller versions, larger yeah. versions? Exactly. So this is, this is the 250. So size-wise, this is the middle, okay? Right. The 500 kilowatt is a little bit wider. And then your smaller ones, your 30, 50, 100 and 150 yep. are half of this size. Right. So they're about 800 millimeters wide. So to put that into context, the Give Energy All in One has an up to six kilowatt inverter. Correct. And then this we goes up to. We start at 30, up to 500 right. for the biggest single unit. And three phases clearly of going course, to be a thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so containers. Yep. I know we've got one at our other site, Brimbo Road. That's it. And you're just starting some here. So can we have a look at them? Absolutely. Cool. Now, I can recognise a container. You don't yep. need to tell me about that. Um, this is a smaller one and there's another one behind it. I know they're, they're coming, so various sizes depending on the installation, I assume. Yep. So standard is 10, 20 and 40 foot because that is the standard size of shipping containers. Yep, yep. Um, and this is right at the beginning. There's nothing, this. nothing inside this yet. Yeah, you're correct. You're about a week late. You Aww. just missed one that's finished. Uh, but there is the one over at the head office that you can have a look so at. You can have a look at the Brimbo Road one. one. Um, so 
what ultimately do you put in? Is it just putting batteries on racks or is it a bit more complicated? Absolutely not. So let's have a look. So open the door and you'll see just a totally empty container, metal, Nothing and in that's it. it. Yep. These containers suffer with condensation, for example, yeah. uh, because of the hot and the cold. It's metal in the sun, then in the shade, you can get a lot of condensation yeah. and water around batteries. Not good. No, not very good at all. So we will fully insulate this first. So we'll stud the walls, put some insulation in, and then we then cover that with a concrete board. It's like a fibrous board and that's really durable. So it's, if you lean up against it, you'll not damage it. It allows us to paint it. And of course you can fix things to it like lights, light switches, sockets, etc. Now I've been in one of these in the summer. Yeah. Got very hot. It does, yeah. So how do you... So two things. Number one, you heard the fan on the inverter yep. back there. That is ducted straight outside. So the inverter's sticking its heat out. So all the heat from that inverter will get dumped outside. We weld a frame into the side of the container that lines up with where the, the exhaust of that system is. Okay. We then also fit an air conditioning unit and that provides the heating and the cooling and the dehumidification. For optimal battery temperature, essentially. Exactly. If we can have the batteries running at somewhere between about 18 and 25 degrees C, that's absolutely perfect for the best efficiency. And that's part of what we do as commercial. We, we always have that discussion. So prior to the system being delivered to you, you'll have had a discussion with one of our sales team and we'll have asked the question, where is your system going? And if you're not sure, we can offer some advice. So it's, it's hardly an off the shelf product. Not at all, unfortunately, <laughs> no. No. but these bespoke solutions are bespoke in all dimensions, it's where they variable. go, yeah. how they run and, and how they look. So I do have one final question, container yep. This full of batteries will weigh an awful lot. How do you get it to where it's going? Do you put the batteries on site? Do you put them in here and ship it? I mean, we're talking mega tons. Yeah, here. absolutely. So the 40 foot container, when it's full, that will be somewhere between about 35 and 40 tons. That makes it quite difficult to crane into place. Yeah. We send the batteries separately. So the batteries come palletized. Everything will be tested here. All your battery rack, your flooring, the painting, lighting, inverter, all fitted here, ready to go and tested. We then package the batteries up on a separate pallet and they'll generally come the day after the yeah, container so it, arrives. It is literally the modular thing. And then mentioned. just plug and play, yeah. This is the container outside our main head office here at Brimbo Road. So I thought I'd just give you a, a little bit of an insight as to what you will see on the inside of one of these containers once they're done. So these are the batteries. That's the inverter. You can probably hear the noise, of course, of some fans, the inverter wine, and the sun is absolutely baking this container right now. Yet these are fine. The optimum temperature. Absolutely no problems at all. And it's doing everything that we said in this video for our main office that it can do. And more, in fact. And as we said, completely bespoke, modular, whatever is needed can be done. So hopefully that has been interesting. I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I've really enjoyed this video. As a battery nerd, I'm, I'm wishing I had this in my house. My wife, probably not so much, but again, battery geeks unite. Thanks to Darren for telling us all about this. Thank you for watching. Again, hopefully it was interesting. And as always, any questions in the comments, please do ask them. And well, this is just the beginning. This is gonna be way more common. It's the way the world is going and it's just making a big difference to energy needs. So again, thank you ever so much for watching. I'll see you soon.